हेलो फ्रेंड्स नाउ इन दिस सेशन लेट्स डिस्कस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ब्रेन ब्रेन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ अवर बॉडी एंड ब्रेन इज अ पार्ट ऑफ नर्वस सिस्टम जनरली नर्वस सिस्टम ब्रेन स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड नर्व्स ऑल दीस टुगेदर नोन एज नर्वस सिस्टम इन नर्वस सिस्टम द ब्रेन इज अ प्रोमिनेंट एंड इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्गन ऑफ नर्वस सिस्टम बिकॉज़ इट इन्वॉल्व्स इन कंट्रोलिंग एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन ऑफ ऑल बॉडी पार्ट्स in this session let's just concentrate how is the structure of brain how it involves in different functions like that okay first brain brain is made of so many nerve cells brain is made of nervous tissue brain is located inside a bony box like structure called the skull skull is a bony box like structure in which the brain is protected so brain is located inside a bony box like structure that box like structure then is skull and that is also called as cranium so brain has very stronger protection as it is very important organ and again the brain is covered by three layers around it the layers which cover the brain are called meninges meninges are the layers which cover the brain for giving protection brain already covered all sides by very stronger structure called cranium or skull and again the brain is covered by more three layers that layers are called meninges and inside the meninges there is a fluid that fluid called as cerebro spinal fluid inside the meninges cerebro spinal fluid is present that cerebro spinal fluid protects the brain from external pressures and shocks and jerks and injuries like that so giving protection is the function of cerebro spinal fluid and here three layers meninges the outermost layer of meninges is dura mater and middle layer is arachnoid membrane and inner layer is pia mater dura mater arachnoid membrane and pia mater these three membranes together called as meninges inside the meninges there is a fluid that is cerebro spinal fluid and the function of cerebro spinal fluid is giving protection to the brain from external pressures and shocks and injuries so that the brain is located like this so the brain as it is very important organ it is protected by different structures and different organs and different parts first part is skull and second are meninges and third is cerebro spinal fluid okay now what is the structure and how is the structure the brain the surface or the upper part of the brain is gray in color the upper part of the brain is called as gray matter what is the reason because the location or the presence of cell bodies exist in the surface of the brain due to the presence of cell bodies of nerve cells brain totally made of neurons or nerve cells but the cell bodies of nerve cells exist in the upper part of the brain so that the brain exist in gray color why the brain why the upper part is in gray color because of the presence of cell bodies if cell bodies are present why that is in gray color yes the reason is inside the cell bodies nasal granules are present due to the presence of nasal granules due to the presence of nasal granules in cell body as the cell bodies are located on the upper portion of the brain the brain upper part of the brain exists in gray color so that is called a gray matter and the inner portion is white matter why it is white matter because all the axons leave from lower part of the brain axons are present in the lower portion of the brain axons are covered by myelinated sheath myelin sheath that is made of fats that is in white color so that lower part of the brain is in white color that is called white matter very simple here brain the upper portion of the brain is gray matter lower portion of the brain is white matter upper part is in gray color because of the presence of cell bodies of nerve cells inside the cell bodies nasal granules are present that is what the reason and the lower portion the lower part of the brain exists in white color because of the presence of myelin sheath that is made of fats that exist in white color so upper part is gray matter and lower part is white matter. okay it is completed next the brain is mainly has three parts in it the brain has three parts mainly there are fore brain mid brain and hind brain fore brain mid brain and hind brain are the parts of brain let's see the structure of 
different parts and the functions of different parts very clearly. First of all, forebrain. And the forebrain is the largest part of the brain again. And again, the forebrain has two parts in it. They are cerebrum and diencephalon. Forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, like that, three parts are present in the brain. First part is forebrain. Again, forebrain has two parts in it. They are cerebrum and diencephalon. First of all, cerebrum. Cerebrum is the largest part when comparing to all other parts of the brain. And cerebrum again equally divided into two parts. Cerebrum has two equally divided parts. They are called cerebral hemispheres. Cerebrum has two equal parts. These two equal parts of cerebrum are called cerebral hemispheres. Right cerebral hemispheres control the functions of left body parts. Left cerebral hemisphere controls the functions of right body parts. These two are the cerebral hemispheres. And again on the surface of the cerebrum, we can see so many elevations and depressions. So many elevations and depressions are seen on the surface of cerebrum. Elevations are called gyri and the depressions are called salsi. Elevations are gyri, depressions are salsi. These gyri and salsi are present on the surface of cerebrum. And what is the function of it? These gyri and salsi help to accommodate more number of nerve cells in the brain. So to accommodate more number of nerve cells, so many elevations and depressions are present on the surface of the cerebrum. The elevations are called gyri and depressions are called salsi. And the cerebrum is a part or it is a position for most of the functions like thinking and problem solving and memorizing and uh, appreciation and expression of our feelings like that. It is the center for most of our body functions. The next one, diencephalon. Diencephalon is another lower part of forebrain. Forebrain has two parts in it, cerebrum and diencephalon. We have understood cerebrum, now diencephalon. Diencephalon is the lower part of this forebrain and again it is divided into two. One is thalamus, second one is hypothalamus. Under this hypothalamus, there is a gland, very important gland, pituitary gland is located. The pituitary gland is called as master gland as it controls all other endocrine glands present in our body. So the master gland, pituitary gland is located under the hypothalamus. That hypothalamus is a part of diencephalon. Okay. Diencephalon has two parts, thalamus, hypothalamus. Okay. And what is the function of diencephalon? Diencephalon is a center for most of the sensory impulses. All the sensory impulses are analyzed in diencephalon. So it is a center for sensory impulses. It is a center for muscular activities. And it also involves in controlling the master gland. Master gland is a pituitary gland that controls all other endocrine glands. So this is about forebrain. Forebrain is the first part of the brain. It has two parts, they are cerebrum and diencephalon. Again, diencephalon has two parts, thalamus and hypothalamus. Next one, midbrain. Midbrain is a part of the brain which lies between the forebrain and hindbrain. There is a middle part that is called midbrain. And midbrain involves in the exchange of impulses or exchange of signals from brain to spinal cord and also from spinal cord to brain. And it also has some sensory centers like uh, uh, vision and hearing. Such kind of sensory centers also present in midbrain. And last one, hindbrain. Hindbrain is the third part of the brain or it is the back part of the brain. Hindbrain again has two parts. They are cerebellum and brainstem. Hindbrain has two parts again. They are cerebellum and brainstem. Cerebellum is a part which involves in regulating or controlling the balance and postures of our body. Equilibrium of our body. Just while walking or while sitting or standing or jumping or doing of any activities, our body positions or our body postures are maintained with some balance. That is by cerebellum. And next one, brainstem. Brainstem again has two parts in it. They are pons veroli and medulla oblongata. Pons veroli and medulla oblongata. These two are combinedly known as brainstem. Brainstem involves very key functions like heartbeat and respiration and blood pressure. All these such kinds of activities are under the control of 
brain stem and even some reflexes like swallowing sneezing coughing all these kinds of activities also under the control of this brain stem and finally the part of brain stem medulla oblongata continues as spinal cord so these are all the parts of brain brain it is very important organ and it is protected in very stronger manner and it has three parts there are fore brain and mid brain and hind brain like that it involves in controlling of most of the functions of our body and also it is the boss for controlling and coordinating all the metabolisms of our body